class has long moved from a class to a community sharing event. And it sort of happened about week two or three. The students had a midterm exam over the last week. And one of their exams was to write a self-assessment, effectively identifying their strengths and weaknesses and what they're getting out of this class. And what we really got upon reading them is the positiveness of this community experience. So to kind of further illuminate this community experience, I'd like to bring up Mr. Paul Kidd. Paul's going to share a little bit about uh, his family experience before we move into Dan Weigel's presentation. So Paul, if you've got some time to come up and share, we would certainly appreciate this. Okay, nope, okay. I have uh, the uh, extreme privilege to introduce somebody who's one of, the, one of the true heroes of World War II, and he just happened to be my older brother, very much older than I was, who lied about his age, got in the Army, talked his way into the Army, he was way tall for his age, talked his way into the Army at the tender age of 16. Okay. And when trouble started, he was a corporal. I'm getting ahead myself a little bit. But anyway, he wrote the LST 393 to, uh, to, to Italy. He went ashore, went up the boot. He went into France, threw into Germany. And uh, I'll show you his medals. I'll show you, I'll show you the ones that we have. We did not have them all. But he had 17 <laughs> battle citations. Two silver stars, two bronze stars, three purple hearts. Let me break out the medals and show you, uh, to you them, and then I'll talk just a little bit about him, and then let you go. This happens to be the only existing photograph we know of of Sergeant First Class Herschel Kidd. He is at this point recuperating from one of his several wounds in Leghorn, Italy. And there are, as I said, there are no other pictures of him in uniform, and there are very few pictures of him not in uniform. I remember him when I was about four years old, I guess, and he was a god when he came in off of uh, the occasional leave before the trouble started. And uh, looked to me like he was going on up to the sky. But there he is. This, as I said, is incomplete. I'm not going to try to talk about all of them. Probably a lot of old timers in here who've worn some of these medals. I do know that uh, he was a sniper, for the most part in Italy, up the, am I pronouncing it right, Apennines, the mountain? Apennines, A-P-E-N-I-N-E-S. I just don't speak of that. Uh, still working with English. But anyway, uh, about the only thing that I have here, two things that I have here that was original that he wore that I know, well, no, there's more than that. Uh, this, this is uh, his uh, combat infantryman's badge, and this was the old Kentucky long rifle. He was from Kentucky, and boy, could he shoot a rifle. Uh, he, he, he was an expert. Anybody got any sights, I'm sure they were hurt. And uh, down here is expert rifle, pistol, bayonet, <coughs> all of it. So uh, give, give you some sort of an idea. Uh, it's kind of hard. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. This is the original Purple Heart, and that's. Uh, oh, here's the star. One, two, three. Okay, it's three Purple Hearts. Can you hold it up, please? Yeah, sorry. Okay. Oh, uh, while uh, while everybody's looking, I will go ahead and I'm almost done now. Um, let's see. Well, okay, I lost some, lost some track. Okay, he. Uh, I said he, I already said that he was a sniper, and uh, he loved the army. He got what they called the million dollar wound 
right off of the bat. That he had three German rifle uh, slugs in his left half. Didn't hit any bones, anything like that. Well, they were going to send him home. He was an orphan like I am, and there was no home to send him to. And they, they, they started checking his record and found out that, hey, this guy is not uh, what he's supposed to be. He's, uh, he's kind of young. Well, uh, what I did not mention in the beginning, our father, although I, my father was killed in the coal mines when I was uh, less than two months old, so I don't know him. However, he was a bugler in World War I. He never actually got on the battlefield, but, he, but, but our father was a bugler. Of course, he taught Herschel, Brother Herschel, who was his first uh, first child, I was his last. Uh, so uh, he taught Herschel to play all the bugle calls, so that when he got to, uh, he got out of uh, boot camp and was sent to Muskogee, Oklahoma, they needed a regimental bugler. He tried out, and lo and behold, he got it. That was a corporal stripes. There's a 16 year old boy from the mountains of East Kentucky, barely reading right, I guess. He's a corporal, okay? And so when the trouble started, he was still a corporal. He got overseas and uh, he went right on up. That did pretty, real good. So basically, that's, that's his story. But when he got shot the first time, he said, okay, you can send me home. Yes, I'm under age, but I'm going to be 17 soon. I'll get somebody to sign for me, and I'm coming right back. <laughs> so they said, okay, we need you. We'll keep you. He wasn't playing the bugle over there. They didn't have buglers going up those mountains and leave. So uh, that's the way he was. And uh, he stayed as long as he could. He got shot pretty bad. His last wound was in the bow. Most people heard of the Battle of the Bow. He got a machine gun left the right hip. I can't remember. He got a German machine gun in one of the hips. That did it. So uh, he fought that. He, he got out and tried to uh, what we call push boots. Uh, um, I don't know. I, that's the only thing I know, pushing boots. But uh, he talked to them and let them stay in and try that, but he couldn't keep up with those youngsters. So they had to go ahead and forward him out. And uh, he, uh, he didn't do well as a civilian, but he, he passed on now and gone on to his reward. But uh, I, 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 never, I was not with him very much because I was off at sea when he got back. And I, I ran away to sea, you know. So uh, that's why I didn't know him as well as I would like to have known him. Thank you. By the way, uh, Dan Wackles graciously agreed that he would be glad to have this, when I get it all together, have this uh, on the LST and put a, a uh, display over there. Because there's nowhere else. He has no living relatives except me. No, no children, wives, both dead, both dead, and uh, never had any children that lived. So bad luck there. Thank you. 